Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're reviewing The Power by Naomi Alderman. What made me read this was not only was it like a bestseller, but this was actually on Obama, Barack Obama, um, 2017 list of books to read. So since it was on his favorites, I was like, oh, of course I have to read it. So um, that's actually honestly why I read it. Um, but it's actually won award. It was the winner of the Bailey Woman's Prize for Fiction. Um, Margaret Atwood, as you guys know, Ham the writer of The Handmaid's Tale, she was a big proponent or like a supporter of this book. Um, so I don't know. I just wanted to read it. A little bit about it is basically it's like a book within a book. So it's a book written by a man in this the fictional book The Power is written by a fictional character, a man who's writing a book about essentially a time where women got this superpower to suddenly become the dominant gender. And in this fiction life that he lives in, women are the dominant gender. So um, you're getting the perspective of seeing three different women as well as one man and how the rise of women suddenly recognizing this power that they didn't know that they had. Apparently they always had this power within their collarbone that allows them to shoot off this electric whatever thing from their hands. Um, it awakens in these women somehow. Like younger women are noticing their power and they're starting to awaken the power in older women and all newborn babies are born with this power and you're slowly seeing the dynamics shift because now women are essentially more of a threat or something or have something over men where one of the person's perspectives is a politician, another perspective is a uh, journalist, another perspective is a religious a woman who rides to religious power and has influence that way. One other perspective is a mobster, a, a daughter of a mobster. So you're seeing all these different perspectives and how the rise of women in power is impacting their immediate circle in the life at, at large and how all of those different channels begin to intersect on creating this new world order. Okay, that, that sounds pretty like a cool concept. So does it go in and out of the book and the real world or is everything? Everything's the book. The only part that's not, that is out is in the beginning. They're you just explaining why he would want to show that. Yeah, like if you look in the beginning here, which this isn't giving anything away. Um, I have a footnote on it. It starts off with a letter to Dare Naomi and it's from Neil. And basically he's asking her to please read this um, like this manuscript, manuscript to mm -hmm. see what edits need to be done and if this is something that she thinks people would be receptive to. What I think is interesting, not to get off, I put a footnote here on one of this. He's like, um, he's kind of rambling, kind of like I'm doing now. I'm embarrassed to admit, but it's cringeworthy to read it. And he's like, anyways, sorry, I'll shut up now. I don't want to influence you. Just read it and tell me what you think. And it's like, there's so much like insecurity almost in his voice and hearing a guy write like this. It's like weird. Why do you think it's written in the structure that it is? So a book within a book. It's I think it just makes it even more hilarious because to me, it didn't need to be written that way. But <laughs> it's funny because of after you're reading the story and you're reading their correspondence to me, I, I had so much fun reading their back and forth because it was almost like, this is such a joke. Like she's so condescending to I him. I thought she said they didn't go back and forth. No, I said at the end when the book's over, oh, their correspondence okay. goes back and forth of you see them writing to each other. And it just shows the power dynamics in a blatant everyday terms. But I think another reason why it was good that it was a book within a book was because a lot of times, as with most things, um, the victors always get to write history. So a lot of his work is speculation and he can't really, he's supporting it with theory, but she's saying like, no, this would be ridiculous. You think there's really a time where guys would have did it and it's like, it's almost preposterous to think that you think some men really were fighting in wars and really were doing like, you know, like it's these things, but it's like, you know, the people who wrote history were women, like who wrote this. So of course it's from their perspective and he's trying to point that out, but it's like, it's hard for her to comprehend or even really think it's realistic or plausible to believe that men at some point could have probably have been this strong, All right. whatever. So it's just funny. So you mentioned that there were several different perspectives um, in the book. Was there any that stood out 
or um, was everybody pretty much equal? Um, did they have, did the characters interact? What was that like? Were they only certain chapters? Yeah, so um, each chapter is told from the perspective. Like, so the chapter titles are told, like, uh, one of them is Mother Eve. One of them is um, from the perspective of Roxy. Like, they, that's what it, the chapters, you know who's speaking because it's the chapter name, if that makes sense, whatever. But as far as which ones stick out, there's ones that I think when you read it, you're going to have your favorite characters and you're going to have people that just annoy you. And then you're going to have some people that you like more. I think it's going to depend on the reader. Um, but yes, yeah, some of the characters do interact. And even the characters, when they don't interact, it's like they kind of know of the other person. Like there's a point where one of the politicians who's rising. It's also interesting. I'm kind of backtracking on how people handle their power. It shows how some people, when they handle their power, even if their intentions start off good, power is just, it's, it's a drug like people can abuse power too much power for anybody is not good and it's interesting to see how those characters develop and change because they're now corrupted by power um and then some characters it's interesting to see how they're almost afraid of their power like it takes them a while to adjust to that and you know the one of the perspectives from the male it's interesting to see how his power is being stripped away and how he reacts to that, like having power and having that power suddenly being diminished and little things like um, there's a scene in the book where he's like leaving an event and he has to walk at night by himself and he's scared, but he can't really express exactly why he's scared, but he's like alert and he has to know his surroundings. and you know, there's a group of women there and he's like uncomfortable to have to pass by them. And it's like when he, you're reading this, well, at least from my perspective, I'm like, I know exactly that feeling. And I know exactly like you're like, just focus, just get to the, and all this other stuff. And it's crazy because at the start of the book, that wasn't his life, but slowly mm -hmm. we're seeing when he's starting to become more aware. And I feel like as me growing up, this is probably getting too deep or weird into it. There was a period in my life where I wasn't as concerned with that, but I know as I got progressively older around like middle school or high school age, I remember that's when that fear started. It creeps in like slowly, but then surely you realize, oh crap, like, you know, mm -hmm. you have to be more just alert. So I don't know. It's just interesting that the way they follow the um, different characters. That's interesting. So did any of the themes of the, you know, I guess sexism when reversed seemed like not feasible to you or like you're like like no come on man that wouldn't happen no. <laughs> no i will say okay i will say this so in the book there's a few rapes like a few men like there's a series where men are becoming getting to be raped and i think at first when it was first mentioned that men were possibly being raped it was kind of like it wasn't like it wasn't believable but i was like what do they mean raped like i need to understand what they mean and then there was a scene where they described the rape and i was like oh he literally was raped because like it was like one at one point there was a gang of females who raped this raped this man and they're like you know he wanted it like you know they were playing with him and doing different stuff so of course he was you know erect or whatever but he and now it's different women and they're like, come on, we know you like to get around. Like you've messed with so many women in here. Like mm -hmm. stop acting like you don't like this. But it was clearly rape. And like, it's like those scenes, I think at first when they were mentioning it without seeing the scene, it was probably hard for me to grasp that it was like a man really being raped by a woman. But then as it progressed with the story being told, it's like, no, that literally was rape. So I could see at first it was inconceivable, but then it became, but no, nothing was inconceivable for me. All right, so another thing I was thinking about, um, so black Baptist churches, do they have female pastors in this book? <laughs> One, black people, I didn't think about them in that much in this book, to be honest with you. Um, what about HBCU bands, do they have female <laughs> Do they have women drum majors? <laughs> um, but as far as the church, there's a big church dynamics with it where the religious leader, Mother Eve or whatever, she's a woman who rises to power and basically takes over the church. 
and it's interesting because a lot of the like the pope yeah like. essentially kind of like the pope um but a female whatever version of that and her following is huge and the interesting part about that is she's starting to use scripture to back like you know women kind of being the dominant race kind of like what they do now basically okay. is use scripture to um support their right. gender biases or theories okay so i wonder how much of this comes from her real life like Right, or do you think she just? I think it's it. satire almost. Satire. I, I don't want to say call it satire, but it's so comical some of the parts. Um, but some of the parts is actually really serious. But it's just like it makes all of this seem so ridiculous because all of it is made up. Like there's a point in the book where you know they. Oh yeah, I remember you talking about this. Like how a lot of stuff is like, you know, our structures are. Never mind. Just start over. Okay, there's a point in the book where, um, you know, she, one of the women is basically like, well, clearly, you know, women are just more aggressive by nature. Like, that's just the science behind it. We had to be more aggressive because, you know, we bear the children. We're protectors of the um, children. We're just more aggressive and more um, protective. And it's like, you can literally use anything in biology to defend any ridiculous notion that you have that one gender is greater or one group is greater or stronger or whatever like you know what i mean like i don't know it's just interesting the stuff that they do and then like you know the guys they start like one of the guys it's funny because he's like a journalist and he's rising to power and people aren't thinking that he people are discredited that he's just a good journalist a lot of people are like, you know, he's an attractive male, you know, a lot of his cl clothes are like form fitting and he's always showing off his like physique and his muscles and, you know, he likes flirting with the ladies and, you know, it's almost like, no, he's really a good journalist, but that's all kind of like discredited because he's an attractive male and they feel like somehow like that's how he is the one who kind of got propelled. So it's, it's just interesting. All right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So what was your rating out of five stars? I give this like a 4.2. Oh, 4.2. That's pretty good. Yeah. I think it was a really good book. It was a solid book. Um, I would give this probably, in terms of reading it, a 3.5. Just because I think it would be the type of book where I can understand some of my biases or um, where women come from on certain things. And also just for the entertainment value. Um, it seems like a pretty entertaining book, especially the sci-fi piece with the actual um, you know, tangible power as opposed to some type of, you know, just privilege um, in the atmosphere. Um, I like that. I like um, that too. Piece. So, yeah, 3.5 star chance that I'll take a look at it. Go to your local library. Um, you can get this on audiobook as well as ebooks if you're not into tangible physical books. The library offers that as well. So, definitely check that out. But I or guess. Or you can buy it, you know. Or you can also buy it, you know. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Left on red. Do